Hi, I'm Phil Berman from Balance Catamarans. I'm here in St. Martin on our Balance 482 called Imbalance, uh, which we've been sailing and enjoying in Europe this summer and now back here in the Caribbean in the winter. Just really having a blast. I wanted to talk here a little bit about how we design and build for performance at Balance Catamarans. Performance to us, it's important that our boats both perform well sailing, but they also perform well when they're living. The two really need to balance each other out. When Anton de Toy and I set about over 10 years ago to design the first Balance uh, 526, we didn't set out to build a racing cat. We were focused on building boats that would be easy to sail and maintain and yet produce good turns of speed. To our uh, surprise and joy, our boats have performed uh, very, very well in rallies and competitions. And I'd like to call out here uh, Larry Folsom and his intrepid crew for winning the grueling 3,600 mile Cape Town to Rio race, besting a high performance French catamaran that uh, touts themselves as being something of a racing boat. Congratulations, Larry and your crew. Whenever I speak with those for whom performance is super important, that it's a, a driving concern of theirs, I always like to point out to them that building a fast catamaran is really quite easy to do. You make the hulls as long and lean as possible. You put up a lot of sail area. Uh, you give her really good foiled uh, dagger boards and rudders and you equip her minimally. You keep her hulls almost empty and you make it impossible for people to carry any payload that long slivery boat is going to be fast. It's really kind of child's play to build that kind of boat. And if we wanted to build those kinds of balance, it would be very easy for us to do if we so desired. But that's never been our focus. The hardest thing is to build a catamaran that sails smartly, but also lives superbly. A boat that is fun to live on, sleep on, has a place to store your equipment, has gracious flow between the salon and the cockpit, provides uh, a vehicle for fun uh, for your family and friends when you're on the boat. A boat is just a lot of fun to be on because in the end, while all of our boats end up making long passages, uh, when you actually arrive at a cruising ground in Europe or, or here in the Caribbean, much of your time is spent at anchor, cooking, dining, living, playing, partying with friends and family. And so it's always been you know, my feeling that if, if I had to give up a little bit of performance, to gain supreme livability, it's a choice that is a choice. There's a few ways in which you can get performance on a catamaran, and you can either do it in the least costly fashion or in a more costly fashion. If you want to do it in the least costly fashion, you use the least expensive materials that you can get to create the longest and narrowest hull possible. You use less fiberglass volume, you put on less equipment on the boat, you put less cabinetry and storage on the boat, and also, quite frankly, uh, you concern yourself less with the durability of the boat itself. You know, making flimsier tables, flimsier doors, flimsier hatch covers, fewer windows. There are many, many ways that you can remove weight from a boat at less cost uh, than doing it with different materials. And when I'm sitting here actually thinking about it, I'm behind these uh, glass windows on our boat. And if we were strictly oriented towards performance, and we were watching weight at every little step, we wouldn't put glass windows in our boats. We put glass windows in our boats because they're durable, they provide better, better visibility, and we know from experience that 10 years down the road, if you have Lexan windows, they'll be cracked, they'll be crazed, they'll be leaking, you'll have to replace them, and all around we just feel that um, on balance, uh, it's, it's the wrong decision to make. If you wanna build a boat to go faster, and money is less important, then obviously you can go with a full carbon epoxy construction. You can go with uh, all carbon mass and carbon booms and beams. You can keep the hulls literally empty if you wish and a boat super Spartan to be like a pure racing boat. But you can also use those savings, those weight savings that come from the higher technology, which is what we do at Balance by using foam cores, lots of labor in our boats, combinations of carbon, epoxy, vinyl ester in our boats, we're able to build wider hulls that have better payload capacity and that offer more interior volume and cabinetry and livability. At Balance, we strive to utilize the latest fabrication techniques and often highly in labor intensive build processes to produce the lightest fiberglass parts possible, the lightest furniture, which enable us to build into our catamarans both more interior volume and storage but more payload capacity compared to our competitors. We buy the creature comforts with labor and technology while striving to sustain performance. 
This is why we advertise the volumes of our halls, the volumes of our deck lockers, and the volumes of our interior cabinetry. We feel it is important for consumers to know such things when comparing performance-oriented catamarans. At the same time, we strive to find a balance between durability and fragility because there are many ways to lighten a catamaran at the unfortunate cost of durability, reliability, and longevity. Our goal is not to craft the lightest catamarans in the world, but to design and build balanced liveaboard catamarans that refuse to sacrifice livability to gain marginal performance advantages. So in effect at Balance, what we do is we use technology and additional labor hours to build boats that are durable, as light as they can be, to build in more volumes in our boat, more livability and space, and yet still achieve very good performance. What we do know is that cruising sailors need to carry a lot of stuff on their boats. And the risk that we see and I've seen over the years is that when people get focused on having very, very narrow performance oriented hulls, sliverier hulls, the boats degrade very rapidly in performance when you start to put on cruising equipment. And in my experience, everybody talks a good game about trying to focus on their weight, but everybody wants the amenities, the refrigerators, the freezers, the air cons, the, the power generation, the solar, all this stuff adds up and you need to have a hull that's designed to, 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 to displace that equipment. As for myself, I do come from a racing background. I spent most of my youth uh, racing beach cats and I had an offshore racing cat at one point. Of course, as I've gotten older, I, I find that what I really want to do when I'm sailing is spend time with my family and my friends to experience the joy of, you know, living on the water. And one thing that's really crystallized for me over the past um, few months sailing here on Inbalance is that in the end, I enjoy, really enjoy sailing the boat. But the most important thing is the livability of the boat, being able to share it with family and friends the pleasure that you get from cooking, the pleasures you get from hanging out on the boat, swimming off the boat, living on the boat, the ease with which you can reef the boat, sail the boat, tack the boat, jive the boat, anchor the boat. All these little details become very, very important. And to the extent that we can make sailing easy, fun, pleasurable, and comfortable, to me, that is, the, that is really the win the win-win of the whole thing. In any event, until I see you next time or catch you at a boat show, stay in balance.